Welcome to The Goblet Wire, a surreal microfiction podcast. Transcripts are available on our website, thegobletwire.card.co. This is Episode 1, Ocular Metamorphosis, written by Justin Hellstrom. Salutations, intrepid cupbearer. You're on the line with Patient Hourglass. Please state your call sign and passphrase. Call sign, moth food. Password, arms akimbo. Nailed to the sky. Legs bent backward. Bear the fountain's weight. Overflow. Bear the weight. The fountain's weight cannot be born. And so the world is crushed, our goblets filled. Welcome, Moth. Clearing Lampjack D19 for cord circuit connection. Ticket 60K43. All right. Die material. Elk bone. Okay. And coin type. 50 yen coin. Minted 1962. Oh. You're not using your Edo period Koban? Are you feeling anxious after the last session? No. Just felt like something different for a change. Okay. Patching you into the dictator. Logging session 23. Please hold. Oh, and Moth. Hourglass? I saw a frog try to cross the highway today. I hope they made it. The cargo ship slides firm across the sea as a blunt rectangle a sepulcher stacked with oxidized containers of faded colors from faded nations. Scars from the vessel's dock union escape are still steaming. But the captain was sure, and you manned the harpoon turrets, and you have entered slate-gray ocean with slate-gray sky and slate-gray mines. Where am I? You stand on the bridge, monitor pings of radar, Fuel and temperature gauges demarcated with symbols you cannot read. The captain stares bowward over the containers to something hidden in the mists and haze. The captain speaks. Moth, there is a memory we must be rid of below the holds. Please take care of it. He hands you a salt-crusted flare gun. Two charges. Captain, memories are not to be forgotten. Wouldn't you agree? Your words do not reach the captain. (sighs) Dictator, why? Why does nothing I ever say reach the captain? You may perform the allotted inquiry for this session. Uh, five. Your sonoluminescence communication stat level is too low. Excuse me? The captain's brain is underwater. There wasn't any kind of sauna luminal calm skill or whatever in character creation. Can one define the color behind the color of their eye? Fine. I take the flare and charges and leave the bridge. The catwalk is algae slick, steel gridded, welcomes the weight of your boots. I look to port. You have never seen ocean such as this. Words come to mind. Sleet, Adirondack, infant skull at the bottom of a pond. I look to starboard. The rolling plains of ash are liquid, overwhelming, gridlocked. A shade of gray bored from the depths of earth which have never seen the sky. Bewildered, cracked, alone. Perform a heartbreak saving throw. Heartbreak? Yes. The sea has gazed upon you, sensed weakness, that hole inside your chest. The sea seeks to fill it. Uh, No. Flip your coin, for it is on such an edge all hearts are balanced and wagered. uh, Tails. There is a child sleeping in a treehouse somewhere in the vastness of your circulatory system. The child is now awake. They can hear the flood approaching. The pain will be immense when it arrives. Poor kid. I'm moving on. Are there stairs? 
Yes. I walk down them, searching for the entrance to the subdeck. You descend along a bulwark, pass through bulkheads, creaking freight, the labyrinth of entombed goods draped in seaweed, the scuttling of crustaceans. I ask a crab where the entrance to the lower holds and stowage are. You imitate arthropod stridulation, waving your arm, pinching your hand claw. Three. The crustacean pauses, bubbles pursed from its mandibles, and points to a container with a claw. Its door hatch is carved from ivory, smells of fuel and haunted museum. I approach, open, walk through. You see that this is not a well-trodden entrance. There is carpet inside, wet, mold-bitten. Sconces carved from coral fossil line the walls of a mezzanine. Beyond its balcony, the interior of a great ship, an ancient pleasure vessel, a galleon of Baroque circus and delight. Thick glass walls of hullwork are green with slime, pounded by waves and dull light. A chandelier sways at the lobby center as a pendulum to a time that does not exist. (laughs) It's not a pendulum. It's a uvula. The staircase is imperial, split. You may choose left or right. Right. You descend. Admiring a mural along the wall of a manatee in a powdered wig, presiding over a fastidious courtroom. You feel the decayed limestone banister. Rococo carvings adorn everything with faces, angels, sea life, and sculpted bronze waves. They cling to the lobby's contours in an indecipherably specific drama. I stop to feel the banister more closely. The ship pitches on a great wave. Listing to port, you fall against the banister as the mural cracks. The manatee breaks loose and plummets passing judgment upon you for trying to decipher the indecipherable. You have five seconds to react. No, I accept this judgment. The manatee is rough, hard plaster weighted by beam and heavy iron nails. You are knocked through the banister and fall. Hit the lobby floor, thankfully rotten, concave from the weight of a harpsichord. You break through, fall further, passing networks of inverted aqueduct, Aquariums with classical composers and splash into a moat on the Orlop deck. You're giving me anxiety. That child in the treehouse sees the flood. A river churned by mud, roots, and mobile homes. But the pain has not come close to arriving. What do I see around me? Have I retained the flare gun? The liquid is acrid. Muted turquoise. Your flare gun is still intact. The charge is dry. I crawl up the far side of the moat. Inspect my surroundings. Words come to mind. Senate, sinkhole, ocularium. Light emanates from the moat, illuminates a drained dome at the center, a tiled chamber for an immense hippopotamus. More words come. Fetid, albino, Low tide styrofoam, bound by chains which are sunk and fused to its spine, the creature swivels its head to you. Its eyes are grayer than the sea, spume-lipped, blind. A sad memory indeed. I load a shell into the flare gun. Look for something flammable. Fuel drums float in the moat. Its water is diesel, nitroglycerin, the blood of God's engines. Is the hippopotamus in pain? Everything is in pain. I drop the gun, wade across the moat. Petroleum whirls pink. The hippopotamus is wary. Performs a threat display of open jaws and cracked tusks. I... I want to be the hippopotamus's eyes. I want to be its vision. Trade our sight. Brave move. Please confirm desire for optical transfiguration. Show me the color behind the color of its eyes. Check success. Ocular metamorphosis complete. What do I see? 
You expect grand mall delusion. Apotheosis, a tunnel of angels bored through heaven with slick guild antediluvia from Eden's untamed past, mating wild and saber sharp and shore broken across the throne of eternity. But you see nothing. Nothing. You are blind. Shit. However, you do begin to feel. Sense static, magnetic laminar flow. Hear the chains break. The lumbering of great weight. You now have a guide who will see things you never could see. You can now decipher the dramas that play behind the stage. To the world and its many hearts laying in the balance. Best of luck. This episode was written by Justin Hellstrom. It starred Damien Nieswand as Moth Food, Nate McDonald as The Operator, and Richard Penner as The Dictator. Art by Chandler Candela. Credit music by Oliver Morris. Editing and sound design by Esther Ellis and Justin Hellstrom. Synthscape by Justin Hellstrom. If you enjoyed this episode, I'm confident you'll love Justin's podcast, The Great Chameleon War. It is a wild story following an AWOL soldier's journey through the nest of massive supernatural chameleons after they unleash war on the human race. It is psychedelic poetry, both violent and human. The first season goes down smooth at only five episodes, and season two is coming out now. I know some of you love Alice Isn't Dead. You in particular need to check out this show. If you want to support The Goblet Wire, help us spread the word. We're relying on word of mouth to get this show out there, and we just went live on Spotify. We would be most grateful if you shared it with a friend. And come chat with us on Twitter at The Goblet Wire. Next week comes episode two, For the Nail, by Esther Ellis. I hope we'll see you there. Are you playing? <laughs>